What's up everybody, I'm Jesse from Mole and the Maker and today we are doing another episode in the beginner welding series. As I'm learning to weld, I'm trying to refine my craft, right? This isn't only been about the third project that I've done, it's been a really fun um, experience, but as I grow I'm learning what not to do and what to do and what's helping me and what's not helping me. So. Today we are building another easy build that if you're getting into welding or thinking about getting into welding, this is a perfect project for you and that is a coffee table base. Now this project is sponsored by ESOB and I love my ESOB Rebel 215. It is awesome, it's a multi-process unit so you can do from stick welding to TIG to MIG welding and their best feature that I absolutely love is the smart MIG setting and it just takes all the math out of it for you. It's, it's customizable, but it also is the perfect way to learn how to weld. Make sure you check them out. Check out the link in the bio. And if you want a discount on their Savage Hood, which is what I use in this video, make sure you check out the link to get that discount. Now let's get into the build. So for this project, I'm using a one by three tubing. It's a one eighth inch thick. It's gonna be a pretty big, heavy, sturdy coffee table. So we wanted to make sure we had the metal that was thick enough to hold the weight. Um, along with people putting their feet on the coffee table, things like that, it's gonna last over time. So we're using a one by three. We're cutting it about at 16 inches, which is a standard coffee table height. And we're going to make a U shape out of the metal. So I took it over to my cutoff wheel and um, started cutting them to length. So you're gonna have to miter these corners, right? Cause you don't want any open gaps on any of them. Even if it's to the ground, it's pretty simple to just miter each side and the bottom piece will have two miters. The sides will have one miter and then the top of the side supports of the U shape leg will actually be flat. We're gonna weld a flat bar on top of that flat piece so it, you don't need it mitered on top. Now for the miter joints, I adjust that fence to a 45 degree and now I cut the miter right on the marks at the 16 inches. Now it's time to clean up the cuts and start to weld. So like I said before, I'm using my ESOP Rebel 215 and we're gonna set that up to start tack welding the pieces together. We're gonna start with one U shape and then we'll move on to the other but we wanna tack it in place before we start welding completely because that heat from the weld will start throwing off our miters. Then after tacking up the corners, we'll go through and finish each weld. Now I do wanna talk about one thing and that is positioning while you're welding. Now, like I said, I'm very new to this. So this is something I am learning as I go. And this weld that I'm about to show you is very, very embarrassing. So as you see, that weld is super ugly and it was because I was trying to do it sideways with no hand support. It was jumping everywhere. It was just the like probably the worst weld of the entire build. Now I, I went through afterwards, I had grinded it off and I re-welded that so it was actually flat and square. And then at the end it did turn out okay. But I think it's really important for you to use that support hand at all times get in the proper position, don't be lazy like I was on that one. Make sure you're sitting it up or just when you're in the proper position to go across and be steady instead of um, trying to do it at a weird angle just to get it done. Now after you have the U shape completely welded up, it is time to weld on the flat bar, which will be the connection piece that will sit against the coffee table top. Once again, tack weld each corner and then go through and finish each weld. Once the flat iron is welded and it looks good, it's time to start grinding. Now one tip that I got online while I'm grinding is that if you pull it towards you more instead of pushing the sandpaper or the flap disc away from you, that flap disc is going to last a lot longer and have a longer lifespan. So just keep that in mind as you're grinding through and cleaning up your weld. I took the two leg portions over to the coffee table top, which has already been built. We're actually using something I built a long time ago for my brother as a wall decor piece. 
and we're gonna just turn it into a coffee table piece because first off, it's extremely heavy and so it was hard to hang anywhere without ripping it out of the wall. And so now we're just gonna turn it into a coffee table. It'll be perfect for board games, things like that. So once those two legs are finished, we're gonna take it over to the coffee table top and measure out the distance between the two. I'm welding up another flat iron between the two legs just so it's one connected large piece instead of uh, two separate legs. So I measured that, took it over to my cutoff wheel, cut the piece and welded it together. So on this butt joint, since it's two flat pieces, one thing I learned after the fact that I wish I knew before is you really wanna leave a little bit of a gap. Now, if you want, if you have an eighth inch uh, piece of flat bar, actually leaving a one eighth inch gap between the two, when you're MIG welding, that wire can go in between and fill that gap and actually make a strong joint. It's a lot less grinding too, because it has somewhere to go. If you butt them up against each other with no gap, then you're actually welding on top and not in between. So leave a little bit of a gap as you weld two flat pieces together. Now we wanted to give a little bit more character to it, plus actually add a little bit more support since it's such a heavy coffee table. So we're using a half inch by two inch steel supports at a mitered angle. So it goes 45 from the bottom U shape up to the top of that flat iron I just welded on. This will give some more character. It won't just be the same legs you can buy off Amazon. This is a whole piece. And we just think the look of it is going to look really nice. So once again, I tack welded each corner and went through and finished each weld. Once the welding process is all done, everything's grinded down, it's looking good. It's time to put some primer and some paint on it. I'm just using some Rust-Oleum that's meant for clean metal. So make sure you clean off rust. Make sure that there's no burrs or anything. Spray the primer, make sure you have a good coat on there, and then it's time to spray the paint. We're just using black paint um, to complement kind of that industrial look that it's going in. My, my brother's apartment is very industrial looking, so it's gonna look great with that solid black. After the paint's dried, it's time to drill the holes in the top so we can mount it to the coffee table. And that's pretty much it. That's a wrap. It's a very fun project. Um, I'm glad we got to get it done. It only took us about three hours of actual work time. Obviously for the painting and stuff, you have to leave it, let it dry for a little bit, but the actual cutting, welding, grinding, it only took us about three hours, which is pretty cool. So you can get a whole project done in an afternoon. If you're a beginner or you're looking into welding, make sure that you check out the ESOP Rebel 215. The smart MIG setting will make your life a lot easier. I, it, the learning as you go process like I've done with woodworking and now welding, it just makes a simple process out of welding. A lot of the math is out of it. You'll love this welder as much as I do. Make sure you check out my channel, check out my website, and make sure you subscribe below. If you have any questions, shoot them down in the comment section. I'd appreciate any feedback from experienced welders on some things I could improve on or technique that you saw or anything like that, shoot them in the comment section. I'd love to hear it. I'm trying to learn more and more about this welding um, trade. And so make sure you shoot those comments below. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.